everybody. The Better Looking Brewer is here with you again today. And I am joined, as always, with the amazing Miss Rebecca. How are you today? I'm doing great. How are you? You forgot to move that mic close, didn't you? I did. I'm <laughs> reading good. Short's book right now. Very nice. Very <laughs> nice. And how are you today, the beautiful Miss Connie? I'm doing good. How's everybody doing? So far, so good. And then we have this ugly old man next to me. Oh, my God. I'm just kidding. You're like the most interesting man in the world. Look, Amen. We got the amazing Brian Schwartz here with us today. Stay thirsty, my friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's good to see you all. Oh, it's good to be seen. It's I'm glad to be, to be here in person. Yeah, welcome back, man. I know. It's good to have you back. It's so awesome. So today, guys, we will be doing a whole bunch of fun things. And one, we'll be talking about Brian's new book. Oh, yeah. Worthy Which Opponents. Is, yeah, it's called Worthy <laughs> Opponents. And uh, for the first five colors today, is a four or five? How many books do we have? Coming? Five. Five. Mm -hmm. For the first five colors, we will be giving away these books, and Brian is going to sign them, and also Pastor Troy is going to sign them, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know the drill, guys. Go ahead and call the number, 877-413-0888. And again, first five colors. Well, we got a couple quick announcements that we want to knock out real quick, and then we're just going to jump right on into it, man. I don't know if you're part of, if you saw yesterday's stream or not, but it got a little bit emotional on the back end of it. You still look like you're still crying. Hey, listen, we're not going to talk about it, all right? Okay. All right. <laughs> I promise, no crying today. <laughs> yeah, no crying today. But, uh, Miss Connie, will you go ahead and lead us off and tell us what the announcements are, please, ma'am? Yes. So I want to remind everyone that Pastor Troy will be back tonight. He will be preaching at Open Door. Also, he will be preaching this Sunday. So make sure that if you can't make it in-house, watch on ODX or, or on our YouTube channel. And as well, not as well, but also coming up is our Overshadow event for the April 8th Eclipse. It is going to be amazing. We really are encouraging people to bring out their whole families. It is going to be a, a, a family ministry day. Pastor Troy is going to begin by giving us a short but powerful message on what the eclipse is all about and what the Lord is speaking through it. Then we're going to transition outside and we're going to get to watch as the actual eclipse passes over us here in Burleson, Texas. And there's going to be baptisms going on. So guys, <laughs> When you, when you go down into that water, the things that are like holding you in bondage, anything that's uh, been a chain on your life, you're going to be leaving that in that water with the declaration of the Lord passing over you. It's going to be so powerful. And we're going to have really cool re re resources and references that you can grab. Don't worry about buying Eclipse glasses. You can get them while they're They're only $3, super cheap. And they're really cool with our open door Eclipse branding. And there are some really, really cool things that you can only get at the Eclipse if you're there in person. So if you can make it, please do. If not, it will be streaming on ODX. Correct. Also, Pastor Tro was just at Flashpoint and it is already posted up onto ODX.TV. And ODX is all things Pastor Troy Brewer. You can go there and find all of his media content, including guest appearances like the Flashpoint broadcast. So if you're not signed up, go check it out and you can see what you get with stage two and stage three. Great job. Mm -hmm. And if you're on all of our socials, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to go ahead and comment so we can see who's there and where y'all from. Tell us about your day. Tell us about uh, <clears throat> how God's talking to you. If you have questions, make sure to let us know also, and we will do our best to get to them. Also, make sure that you like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff on YouTube. If you're on any of the other socials, such as X or uh, Facebook, Instagram, all that fun stuff, make sure just to follow and comment. All right. That concludes all of our announcements. You guys do an amazing job. <laughs> <laughs> we do it a couple times a week. So you do. At this point. You're well-versed, but still. You yeah. guys are doing great. Love it. So the last time we had you on here, we talked about Africa, but you had a book come out, I think yesterday. It's actually official. Yeah, it went recently. live yeah. yesterday. My first book. That right. was quite a quite a journey. So cool. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I, the, the gentleman who did the foreword, uh, John Gordon, is a prolific author and speaker. He lives down in my neck of the woods, and it was just a cool connection. How God connected us, and then he opened up some doors, and before you know it, a book was written. And it's my first. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's not the last. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure that out as people either want it or don't. I think it's timely. You know, it's mm -hmm. a subject matter about what it means and the value of facing adversaries, facing mm -hmm. a worthy opponent. For us as kingdom people, we know we've got an adversary. We've got many adversaries, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of drill down into several different aspects of that. But then also just life, facing adversity, facing pressure. Uh, right in the book though, man, there's times you, you're so into it and you're like, this is no good. 
No one's going to like this. <laughs> oh, well. oh, it's crazy. Then you you have to pull out of it for a while. Then you go back in. Okay, this is actually good. You can forget you, when, you're, when you're writing stuff out like this, the value of the revelation of the kingdom mindset. Mm. Uh, and that's what I've tried to, to help people get is what does it look like to have the mindset of Christ Amen. as we live our daily lives, but then also in the season of history we're in. Uh, we're facing worthy opponents. Right now. So was that the most difficult the most difficult part about writing the book? Is that like having to remember like, no, actually this is something that's needed? Yeah, it is mm-hmm. because what I think I've heard a hundred times either coming in or out of me. Mm-hmm. And when I'm ministering mm-hmm. to others and then you're you're writing and you see it on paper, you're like, Everybody knows this. Mm-hmm. But then you have to pull back out and go, Okay, no, this is valuable. Let's keep going. Mm Because there were those moments. I'm like, is this even worth it? Mm -hmm. But uh, at the end of it, though, um, the finished product, and again, people will will be the judge of that. Mm -hmm. But I think the Holy Spirit all throughout it, I was thinking about different people that was going to reach and help. And that's the ideal thing is like, Mm -hmm. who is this going to impact? No, I mean, I I tried to stay in the first chapters Mm -hmm. that we would talk about today because I didn't want people to get too much without getting the book for themselves. But just what I read through the first couple chapters, I did go past that, but my questions are pulled from the first chapter. I'm just like, whoa, this is such wisdom. And it's just, it's like power punches, you know? And you had a couple one-liners where I was like, oh my gosh, that's a sticky (laughs) note. (laughs) It's filled with a lot of those, like you said, those punches. And that's how I'm wired. I'm a middle linebacker by nature. Mm -hmm. You know, there's Mm -hmm. a reason I played that when I was in the NFL. I I love to punch the enemy in the face. Mm -hmm. And if we can get people to to grab hold of some of these, I I did enough of the scriptures that would cause people to have to dig deeper. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make them, you know, help them develop a hunger Mm -hmm. because a lot of it is about mindset and perspective. And my whole Mm -hmm. thing is, man, if you've got the right mindset, you can develop a skill set. And right. then we can be a true asset Amen. to our to our world. And that's what Jesus came to do. He brought alignment. Oh, good, mm-hmm. yes. Right? Alignment, mm-hmm. and then he brought an assignment, and he mm-hmm. says, now go attack. Mm-hmm. And I think that is the kingdom message. I'm oh, digging it. So <laughs> I've been around, obviously, when Pastor Troy has done all of his books. Obviously, you said that part of one of the hardest things is just thinking this common knowledge. What are some of those points that you thought were just common knowledge that's actually not? Well, the the whole thing I when I was writing it, it was like God gave me this little this little paradigm to look through. And I have a chapter on right sizing God. Mm-hmm. You know, that sounds what do you mean by right size? Well, our view of who he is is the most important thing when you look through a lens. So my whole thing is, man, when you look at the word, it gives you a mirror. Like mm-hmm. you're looking into a mirror. It's reflecting both who we are, but it's also reflecting who he is. And who he says he is, but also who he says we are in view of that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so when our perspective can grow and we can magnify who he is, it helps us move from being a mirror to also having a lens. And so I talk mm-hmm. about what it means to right-size God. I, I assume everybody gets that. <laughs> but when it comes to magnifying him, what does it look to, ma- to magnify him? What does that look like? I walk through some of that. But then also in view of that, we can resize the enemy. Right, So we put the enemy in his proper Mm -hmm. place. We give the enemy so much credit, Mm -hmm. but we also give him power. When we believe Mm -hmm. his deception, when we believe his lies, when we believe his accusations. So I talk about how do we actually resize him. When Isaiah goes, this is it. (laughs) This is who we spent all this time fussing about at the end. such a crazy scripture, yeah. Right? It's Mm -hmm. like he's kind of mocking going, how did we let him grow so big? And I talk about the Wizard of Oz in that part, <laughs> just because it took a dog and a little girl yeah. to pull back the veil and go, it's mm. just a dude back here. <laughs> he's yeah. got power. Don't get yeah. me wrong. But most of the time we're giving that to him. And then the third thing is how do we, in view of right-sizing God, resizing him, how do we reframe our life in view of those things? And not everybody gets that. Most people start with their current circumstances mm-hmm. and they funnel that through their own matrix versus mm-hmm. funneling it through the prism of how great he is, mm-hmm. also how small the enemy is. And now we've been given all the tools we need to win in life, to be victorious, even though we're going through adverse situations. I saw a meme the other day of the devil sitting on the side of the road crying, 
And somebody walks up to him like, what's wrong with you? He's like, I didn't even do anything this time. They're still blaming me. Like, <laughs> you know? That's true. That's funny. Yeah, like, it's we don't need him. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like we're there. Yeah. Our own stupidity it, is amazing sometimes. But <laughs> it, I, I think you're right. It's smart to step back and look and see if we're looking at a mirror or if we're looking through a magnifying glass. What we're doing. I think that's a good way to put that. I know that Connie has a whole bunch of questions for you, too. Yeah. So you mentioned that, you know, we're kind of like uh, an ambassador for Christ. And you had this one part, well, in the in the in your book, you talk about how God has this this type of blueprint for how yeah. He develops us. And you use these three words. You said He delivers, He develops, and then He deploys us. Yes. And so mm-hmm. He's like, what you're saying is like when we're an ambassador, it's He's taken us through this process. And I love that you said, Hey, this isn't just a historical narrative. This is what He does. This is a blueprint that He follows with yes. us to this day, like present day in your life right now. Yeah. So can you just talk a little bit more about that, like that, how that process is? Yeah. So this revelation was birthed when I was on a flight, actually flying here (laughs) several years ago. I was flying and we hit turbulence. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so it it was describing the turbulence I was feeling on the outside was speaking to the turbulence I was going through on the inside. It was a season in my life where it was very turbulent. Mm -hmm. And and I was in Judges chapter 3. And in that chapter, it talks about how Yahweh, how God intentionally, Joshua's generation died. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now there's a new generation that did not, says, did not know how to fight. They did not know how to war. Mm -hmm. And so you've got an ill-equipped generation Mm -hmm. that still has to face hostiles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it says God doesn't deliver them. It says God left hostile nations intentionally Mm -hmm. to test and train this generation. Mm. Wow. And that's where the whole revelation mm. of the book came from is God will intentionally leave worthy adversaries. Now, what is he doing? He's training, developing, equipping, mm. just like he delivered them out of Egypt. He delivers us. He delivers us out of our slavery to sin, out of that cruel master. But then he takes a generation through the wilderness for 40 years. Mm. He doesn't just deliver them. He's using the circumstances of the wilderness and even the circumstances I just spoke of in Judges 3, to do what? Develop them. Mm-hmm. Because his heart was never, you're just a bunch of slaves. He had in his mind's eye, you're a kingdom of priests. You're going to rule and reign, and you're going to do it on my behalf, and you're going to be my ambassador to shine light yeah. into darkness to all these hostile nations. Mm-hmm. They're going to one day want to serve me mm-hmm. because of who you say I am. So he's mm-hmm. developing them, especially in their mindset. Because mm-hmm. when they encountered giants, when they encountered different things, their mindset was, let's go back to Egypt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, think about that. We mm-hmm. kind of cut on them, but we, I understand that, man. Mm-hmm. God doesn't like take away the heat. He turns, turns it up. up. Yeah. And so part of the blueprint is he lets us go through difficult situations to train and develop us, not to torture and reject us. Mm-hmm. Most people interpret problems that we face as actual problems. When in reality, when we're in the kingdom, every problem is an opportunity to get the solution, to draw near, to develop the mindset. And then the ambassador, not as he just developed, he wanted to deploy them. Right. Mm -hmm. His goal was to send them into hostile territory, fully equipped and developed. And that's what we see. This generation didn't understand that. Joshua did. Mm -hmm. And so what did he do? They would step out and then Yahweh mm-hmm. would come in and go, you guys think you did the lifting? Not a chance. It's me. Mm-hmm. Yep. This generation didn't have that same understanding. So he's taking them through another cycle of development so that mm-hmm. he can deploy them. And that's what Jesus does for us. Yeah. It's that whole, hey, I send you out as sheep among wolves. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you're not alone. He said, mm-hmm. you'll mm-hmm. face many problems, but lo, I'm with you. Mm-hmm. And not only that, all authority has been given to me. I now give it mm-hmm. to you. And so that's the beautiful thing about an ambassador. I put this, this is in the book. Mm -hmm. The ambassador doesn't live by the economy of where he was sent. He lives by the economy of the kingdom that sent him. And so we are assigned and sent Mm -hmm. and we live by his kingdom economy, even though this worldly economy is a whole different platform. So good. Mm Okay. Hey, real quick. uh, People are asking in the comments, where can they find your book? Amazon. Go to Amazon. It's right there. Worthy opponents. And then I've got a a website as well. It's called fourth, 
the letter N, like fourth and short. Go figure, right? <laughs> Sounds like a meathead linebacker. So yeah. fourth and short, <laughs> you can click on, there's a link there too, but I would just go to Amazon. We've got uh, Kindle, paperback, hardback. Oh, you got it. fancy with the Kindle, the, huh? The Kindle, baby. Ooh. I want to do an audio. <laughs> I want the audio oh, one. I want to do the audio, the audio my myself. Favorite. Yes, it would be. And I want to do it in different. I want to like mess around a little bit with it. You know, we can record that. Let's do it. I do have a studio. Okay. So. It, okay. Just saying. Next Let's time work here. on that. I want to do the audio. Would you do it in Spanish? We can get a program that probably okay. can help us That do would that. be awesome. Have yeah. seen him try to speak Spanish? Well, you don't want to see him. Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe you know a little bit or something. See. <laughs> Poquito. <laughs> see. That's all I know. You know right? I tried you to get know. hot water down in Mexico. What did you were, say? I, I said, uh, what did I say? Agua. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it's fi- fuego. I was oh, like, fuego, water agua. Water with fire? Yeah. yeah. And I waited five minutes, and the gal came back with a liter of cold water. I'm like, I oh, know maybe I, I think she thought you were hot. <laughs> yes, and that, oh, that's then what she it was. gave you the water. Yeah. Thank you for saying Cause that. Because I was so confused. She thought I was saying, I'm so hot and burning up. Please go get me water. Yeah. I think that's what she thought. <laughs> so somebody can do that okay, in Spanish. We'll awesome. figure that out. <laughs> Oh, that was good. God. Yeah, that was. <laughs> fuego, agua. You can say fuego when you're preaching fire of the Lord fall upon. Large us. white man, hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what gave him water. You should have seen her face too. She was so confused. She was like, huh? and I was confused too because I didn't know what he was trying, to, mm-hmm. what he was going for. Because like I just was walking by as it well, happened. But just the look of just sheer. I was like almost terror. Don't understand this. And then and then I was. And who drinks tea? I wanted. To, I was drinking tea. Like who does that? That was the problem. That's hilarious. Yeah. That's <laughs> All, right. All right. Worthy opponents. Yeah, so, yes. <laughs> so you mentioned the scripture, ju- Judges 3. Three. Mm-hmm. And um, soon after in your book, when you mentioned that, that you talked about how you kind of understand what the Lord was doing from a father's perspective because of your kiddos and how you partner with them yeah. and how you want them equipped. And so... I wanted to ask, how do you like? How can you sh- see the father's heart of Yahweh when he? It seems like he's kind of like, no, look, I'm gonna leave you to these nations. You're gonna have to fight them. How is that him being a good dad and not being kind of like, mm, yeah, waiting for you to mess up so that there can be judgment? Yeah, it almost feels like he's setting up them up for failure. Yeah, versus having the kingdom perspective. So mm-hmm. this is why it's important to have the right mindset and to right size God. We're prone as human beings to believe the worst about people, right? We're pre-programmed. I don't trust. I don't believe the best about you. The yeah. kingdom is the opposite. The father, you have to start with Yahweh. No matter what you read in the Old Testament, many people don't understand the violence. They don't understand the why behind his assignment many times. Mm-hmm. In this case, because the generation did not know how to fight, they had lived and drafted Mm -hmm. off the previous generation Mm -hmm. that had done all the hard work. Mm -hmm. Now they needed to relearn and be developed. And so a good dad fights the giants of his generation, and you clear the land of those. But then when you have kids, you know that you didn't get rid of all of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, you still, they didn't exterminate everything. So they're going to inherit some of your giants, but they're also going to have to learn how to fight their own giants. Mm. And so he was helping them see they are responsible for their growth and development to be able to fight in their generation. It was different giants, Mm -hmm. different things. Joshua had cleared the land. Now there was a new group that they were responsible to fight. They didn't know how. Now, that's partly the problem of the, few, the generation before. So my job as a father is to train and equip. I put this in the book, train and equip my children, but also let them know that I'm right there by their side. So Yahweh didn't withdraw his presence. He was willing to participate and partner with them, mm-hmm. but he was testing them. And this is where I think the questions could come. Does our God test us? Absolutely. Yes. 100%. Yeah. And the test isn't meant to torment. Mm -hmm. It's a test from a friend is an open door and an opportunity for growth. Mm -hmm. A test from a father is an open door and an opportunity for growth. The Mm -hmm. test from an enemy is a trap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to start with our God. He doesn't set up traps. He's setting up opportunities. 
And that's mm-hmm. the big difference. And so he's trying to teach these guys the opportunities put in front, in front of you. It's dressed up like an enemy, mm-hmm. but it's the opportunity to see how I'm going to show myself on your behalf. So the father didn't reject them. He was willing to stand beside. That's what I put in the book. My job is to train and equip them, but then also most importantly, let them know I'm right here with you. Mm-hmm. I'm in it with you. Yeah, so beautiful. The, just the relation. I think, I mean, like for me reading that, I it takes me, like I have to be intentional. When I read Judges 3, I have to be intentional to remember, no, the Lord is relational and he's not He's not abandoning them to their own devices. He's He's still there and he's, He's like, like what you said, he's walking it through with them. Yes. And I don't know. I think that that's a good for me, myself, personally, to be to remind myself to remember, like, no, the Lord's relational, Mm -hmm. you know, and he said he'll never leave or forsake us and that he'll go with us to the ends of the earth. But just sometimes reading those, especially in the Old Testament, you all (laughs) like I almost automatically have a mindset where it's like, oh, okay, this is where the Lord was kind of mean, you know, even though I know that that's not true. It's still like I have to work on not seeing it from that perspective. You're spot on. I, I, if, you know, we all have our, our histories and our origin stories. Mm-hmm. We have evidence of a previous life, right? Mm-hmm. Then we get yes. born again mm-hmm. and we're recreated. But the pain and the memories and the traumas we went through when we were younger, you know, they've discovered this. Your memories aren't actually your memories. It's your interpretation of what happened. Mm-hmm. Now, if the enemy is helping you interpret, mm. then the thing you went through, like I went through abuse. So before I met Christ, abuse, I was angry. Mm -hmm. Why did you let this happen on your watch? Where were you? I wasn't talking to God. I was talking in my my natural sense with my family. Why did you leave me alone with them? Why, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. but then I meet Jesus and all of a sudden he starts giving me the mind of Christ. And I realized I wasn't alone. I just didn't know he was there. Mm. Wow. And he wasn't authoring it. Right. He was allowing me for whatever reason. And people have trouble with even use words like that. Like God allowed me to go through the fire. Look through the scriptures. Mm-hmm. He, he allows us to go through tough mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. But when we don't know him, we don't even realize he's present. Mm-hmm. There's been people that have gone through trauma. Like you had John on yesterday, right? Mm-hmm. John was able to go through the trauma, come through it, have a renewed mindset about it to where yes. 10 years later, mm-hmm. when most people get triggered, mm-hmm. he's triumphant. Mm-hmm. What is that? So it's a work of God's spirit helping him reframe. So that's like the trauma we go through. It's not God abandoning in us, but when we come to know Jesus, we get to go back if he allows us to go back to the trauma and we get to allow him to reframe it. And we actually see how present he was. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and you don't realize that till years later. And so then, then the chains of shame fall off. But it's still tough to believe because you read this history where it looks like God just left his kids out to dry and fend for themselves. But most of the time it was these, they chose to go their own way. Mm-hmm. Even though he was present, they chose to blend in. This generation failed. They actually compromised. Instead of standing out, they, they chose to compromise. And so it's, it's tricky. Yeah. My point is, this isn't easy. It takes faith. It takes courage. Just like you said, I had to really dig in and bring the interpretation of the Holy Spirit, how mm-hmm. he sees this. And I think that's a great point. Is any, so good. Well, so you talked about transformation. And um, like what you said, if you don't mind me reading yeah, an please. excerpt, you said transformation is not merely a cycle. It's a divine intervention, a heavenly sign that we are destined to leave a legacy far grander than mere existence. And so what stood out to me is that, you know, transformation isn't necessarily like something that happens in an epic event or this like fantastic odyssey, but it's it happens over time. It does. It's a process. Mm-hmm. And so just... And I guess that leads back to the like the the deliver, develop, yeah. and deploy. But just the way that Lord the, that the Lord is so careful to spend time taking us th- 
through a process yeah. and it's not like okay well now you're gonna fight a giant so that's how you're gonna get your transformation it's not necessarily yeah. like that it's like no you're actually gonna wander in the wilderness yeah. for a time and then you're gonna have this transformation that takes place yeah it's it's both our walks with him are both like he will deliver us sometimes mm -hmm. like right when they came out of egypt boom mm -hmm. just i'm gonna deliver you I'm going to take you through the Red Sea. These are like moment in time experiences mm -hmm. that are markers in your soul that you're like, he did something. Mm -hmm. And we've all had those. Yeah. But what that is, is just an invitation into relationship. It was never meant to be the end point. The deliverance he gets us is about birthing us into this place where now we can actually grow, develop, and learn. So, so transformation is both a breakthrough and a breaking in, but it's also about follow through. Mm -hmm. So transformation happens when we both break through with him and then allow the Holy Spirit to daily help us to follow through on renewing our mind, That's so right. Good. right? And to follow through when the mind gets renewed, the heart begins to follow. Mm -hmm. Romans 12, one through two talks about that. And we can dive into that. A we can do that more. behind the veil because it's time to go back there. Ooh, I like behind the veil. Exactly. Well, guys, hope you're enjoying this so far. For those of you on ODX, stay where you're at. Uh, for everyone else, be sure to come check out ODX when you become a Tier 2 or Tier 3 member if you want to keep on watching this. Oh, man, there's so much stuff that we have behind the veil that we talk about behind the veil. And one of the things I'm going to ask you about, actually, is there's a couple different people that have been asking questions about how do they see God in their past? And yeah. that's the question I'm going to ask you behind the veil because awesome. I feel like we can get pretty deep on that. And yeah. It's going to be fun. Yes, sir. But in the meantime, guys, again, don't forget Pastor Troy will be here tonight. He will be preaching, I believe, I texted you. It was the, what was he talking about Moses? What was it? <laughs> All right, I just had a brain fart, guys. Yes. I had it. He is going he to be preaching about Matthew 20, what's fair and what's not in wages. And the uh, other one was the secret power of Moses and the importance of the takeaway and get things done. How to go. get things done. Uh, See, this is why I text people because yes. I, mm -hmm. I start talking and then I forget. That's, that's okay. That's a problem. What was a couple different things? <laughs> yeah. It was multiple things in that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, you want to be sure and tune in for that tonight. And then don't forget, we also have a Sunday service. And then right after the Sunday service comes a Monday eclipse. Oh, you do not want to miss that. It's called Overshadowed. And we'll be doing um, baptisms there. We'll be doing all sorts of cool stuff. Come rain, sleet, snow, whatever. We're still going to be doing it. So be sure to come on out, guys. All right. It is time for us to go behind the veil. So we will see you amazing people on social media next week.